Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wired Up with Mark. Today we're going to be talking about the five-step matrix sequencer. Let's see how it sounds first. This module right here. So what makes a matrix sequencer special uh, versus a normal sequencer is that it has two dimensions to run in. So usually a normal sequencer will just run from start to finish, uh, but this sequencer has a second dimension that it can run in as well. As you can see, it's going from one lane down to the next, down to the next, down to the next. Um, and this will be a little easier to understand uh, if I isolate the sequencer and then we can kind of step through it uh, one, one at a time. Um, I have these triggers here for right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how uh, you can step the X sequencer and the Y sequencer independently of each other. So clicking on the button here, and you can see how the big blue dot uh, is moving from the start, this green lane over here, to this red lane over here. Okay. Now we can do the same thing in the Y direction, if I gate the Y input there. And of course, I can sync the sequencer where I can press this and it will go back to the beginning, wherever that beginning is. So a little basic overview of the controls. So I can change the X start position. So if I sync it again, um, whoops, sorry. If I sync it again, it will jump to that start position for the X sequencer. And then we have the X end uh, right here. And so this means uh, it will go just between one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. One, two, three. And so I can go one, two, three, and then skip down here, and then go to the next lane, skip down here, go to the next lane, skip down here. And you can see how uh, you, can, you can put together a longer composition where you can have up to 25 separate notes uh, in all of these knobs right here that you can uh, go between. So what I'll do here is set the sequence, reset it, and show you how the outputs work. So from here, we have on each sequence lane, on the X plane and the Y plane, you have an independent sequence output. So we'll have these two right here, and we'll go between the two. And I'll set the Y up there, so the Y is just going in between this and this. So I'm going through the X, and you can see I'm stepping through, and it's creating this sequence right here. Right? And this is a modulation output, so between 0 and 1. And with that modulation output, you can translate it into octave signal or whatever you want to use it for, but it starts as a modulation signal. So we can pop down then to the second sequence down here, and you can see that's different right there. And the way that you can do that so that it goes right in a row, you say, okay, um, for every one pulse here, I'm going to slow this down, every one pulse, I'm going to go forward on the X plane, and then if this is if the sequence is five steps long, then I need a uh, divide by five, and then every five steps it'll pop down back from the Y, the pop down to the next Y sequence. So returning back to the beginning there. And so if we have, say, we, we shorten the um, X sequence and go to four, now you see how it'll, it'll it, it's sort of out of sync there. That's because we're using this five step uh, to control shifting between the X and the Y sequence. All we need to do is uh, select the four output there, and I'm going to resync, resync it there, and now it's going one two three four one two three four across, and then you can go down as far as you want. So you can imagine that you can uh, say, for example, I can clock the Y sequence every eight pulses, and then that will repeat each uh, sequence lane on the X twice, right there. And what you're getting here is you're, you're getting n even if this blue dot, uh, let's slow this down a little bit. Even if this blue dot is not currently on the current step selected, you're still getting this output here, and you're still getting also this output at the same time, because you can see these little blue dots here indicate which step is currently being outputted on the X sequencer, and which step is actually being outputted on the Y sequencer as well. So 
all of these outputs, all of these steps are being outputted down here at these Y outputs. And then all of these X steps are being outputted on the X uh, outputs over here. Now you also have, of course, the X, Y, which is the where the current, the big blue dot is. That's the current step uh, that the whole sequencer is outputting the X, Y step. Um, now, a key thing, the, the, I'm giving you sort of an, an overview of how matrix sequencers work, uh, and so that's, that's about the long and short of it. Um, but uh, what is unique about this sequencer in particular is that there are several modes uh, that you can go into, and I'll step through each of these modes, uh, and I'll use these demos to actually um, illustrate what's going on in each of the modes. So we have uh, these controls. I'm going to... Uh, show you some things about them. So uh, again, the, there's a begin and end, and if I, if I switch the position of the begin and end, it goes from the begin to the end. So if, if they happen to be on the other side of each other, if they're reversed, then the, the sequence will move in a different direction. I go this way, like this. So now the sequencer is going to kind of, you know, uh, what's that? <laughs> and instead of left to right, it's right to left and then bottom to top. Uh, and so you can modulate these controls to get some cool um, changes of the pattern that you're going through. Okay, and then we also, in this uh, particular mode where we're clocking, we have this ability to also instantly uh, reverse the direction of the sequence just by here. So you have this kind of X sequence over here and a Y sequence over here. And I can change this direction knob so it goes backwards. And then I can change it to go forwards again. Or uh, this, what's called a, a random walk, where I can go anywhere in between there and it will randomly choose every time a new clock pulse comes in, whether it goes forward or backwards. And you can bias it so that like, okay, 75% of the time it will be going forwards and then 25% of the time it'll go backwards. And then it actually shows you right there uh, what direction it's going in uh, with that arrow. So now it's most of the time it's gonna go backwards and then just some of the time it'll go forwards. Okay, and a, another nice feature is that if you have um, the X and the X begin and end step on the same step, it will show you, okay, with an X that it can't go in either direction. So it's just indicating that, uh, that this control doesn't do anything because it's, it's forced to stay on one step. Okay, same thing goes with the, the Y sequencer, except this one goes up and down. Um, and we have also here this uh, random function, which is very cool. And this is in this gate function here. So you have this gate uh, here. We'll, we'll go into the mod mode and show you else what, what, what else goes on. We have uh, the random function. So I press this and then every time a gate pulse comes in on the X sequencer, it is choosing a random step from that X lane that it's currently in to move to. And the Y sequencer is still stepping through normally. It's still going one after the other after the other, uh, unless we turn that on as well. And then that will randomly choose a new Y sequence to go to every time. And you can also uh, clock these remotely and they, they're toggles. So I can click it and it'll toggle on and off, toggle on and off like that. And finally we get down to here. So these are, um, these outputs right here are, polyphonic outputs of the X and Y sequences. So we can see you have two different signals coming through here and then uh, three from here, right? And that's this, this sequence here is this one, this one, and this one all combined together into one polyphonic signal that you can then send out to uh, synth. So you can have, you can think about this sequence over here is like a chord that you're playing. So you can have, you know, say a four note chord uh, that you're sequencing this in this direction, while at the same time having another four note chord that's going in the in the Y direction. And what's so great about a matrix sequencer is, you know, they're always kind of playing the same notes, and especially the X, Y sequencer, you have this melody that's going over what you're, what is beneath it, what's playing at these chords or, or other lines that are coming out, and they all sort of agree with each other if they're quantized in the same way, and uh, you can basically create a whole composition from this kind of one base station of one sequencer, rather than having to have multiple different sequencers for every single part that you want, you can really just control it right from, from one uh, one area. So that is the 
up here you have the X uh, polyphonic output. So this is this is two, three, four, and then all five together right there. And the same thing with the Y. The Y is down here, and so that would be two, three, four, and five uh, all grouped together. And you can see that. So you can see how in the the Y sequencer, they're changing only every Y input pulse because that's that's the only time that, that all of those are changing as this these blue lines are coming down, uh, this, this little blue line of small dots. That indicates the current step that these Ys are on. Okay, um, in addition, in this mode, uh, you have these, and basically in both modes, these inputs and these outputs all do different things. Uh, and so it's kind of custom to that mode. In this mode, what it's doing is it's choosing a random uh, output from a uh, random knob somewhere on the sequencer field every time you pulse this input and then outputting that as a sequence here. So it's not a totally random value, it's a random uh, knob from the, the, the field of knobs that you have there. And the same goes with the Y sequencer. So every time the Y sequencer is pulsed, it just grabs some random knob from that field. Uh, there. Okay. And that is it for this, this mode, of course. So uh, we're going to flip in now into, um, well, actually, let, let's, let's hear this again. So I'm, I'm going to explain what's going on in this patch, and it will illustrate more sonically and reinforce what you just learned. So, okay, I'm going to turn this up, but not too much. Okay. So what I have here is I have this clock running in uh, 16th note pulses, and then I have that 16th note pulse coming here to clock the X sequencer, and then I have the 16th note to come down to this Y sequencer. So the, the sequencer is stepped to four steps by four steps, so there's 16 steps total here within that five by five grid, and every time um, it goes down to a new sequence lane, it's repeating that sequence four times. And in this way, you can also get more out of your sequence where you're not just limited to 16 steps. You get uh, more steps based on how much you repeat a single line of sequence. In addition, it's also every 64 steps toggling the randomness. So that's every time it goes through the entire um, uh, sequence, it's toggling that randomness uh, on and off. Okay. And then what we're doing with the output of this sequencer is we have the XY sequence here. I'll turn this down a little bit. We have the XY sequence. You can see it there. That's going to this mod to aux and uh, further on, and you can actually see the visual uh, output on this waveform node. It's going through here, getting translated. <coughs> Excuse me. It's getting multiplied by 1.94 in that increases the range over which this modulation signal can uh, can play. Basically, it's kind of saying it's, it can play about two octaves, and then I'm shifting it down one octave here. That's sent into the quantizer, or sent into the VCO. These LFOs are just modulating uh, the shapes of these two uh, oscillators here. The output of the oscillator goes to the filter over here. The envelope is clocked by the 16th note output there, the same as that's clocking the X. And it's going through the filter, the envelope is modulating the filter cutoff, modulating the VCA. Uh, we also have here an LFO that is modulating uh, the, the offset of the, you, you have an attenuate offset module where the modulation from the envelope is going through this, and then this LFO through this offset is basically adding, and it's basically like a phantom hand that's turning up the knob in addition to the, um, the envelope that's already going through it. Uh, and then you have here going through the, the delay, you have a polyphonic delay where you have two different delays in uh, each gear. They're just slightly off of each other just to give a little stereo effect and then going through a reverb into the output. So that's, that's that whole patch. And what this patch is, is really showing you is the, how you can create a lead sound with the XY output and create a really long sequence uh, that has a repeating elements, but also has a little bit of randomness to it as well. Okay, so next we're gonna go to um, modulation mode.
and this this is really fun. So I'm going to move these aside for a second, and I will grab an LFO from here. And really, for for these modulation, you can use whatever kind of. Actually, I'm going to use the, the big boy LFO uh, as well. And what you can do is drive the sequencer directly with the modulation. Uh, and this is a not a not a typical thing that you'll see on a lot of sequencers. I think there's some that, that do have this, but uh, essentially you are okay. There we go. So I'm going to drive the X sequencer uh, directly using the cellophane. You can see it's moving backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it's a little reversed from the when it's in when it's in clock mode or a gate mode. It kind of starts up here and, and goes down. This is more kind of you can think of it as, as kind of Cartesian, where there's the origin point is at the bottom, and it's moving it on the X plane or moving it on the Y plane like this, going up. And what I can do is create a second one. We'll have two for X and Y. And you can see how we can uh, do this independently. So we have the Y and the X. And now it's kind of going around in a circle around the, uh, the whole sequence field. And what's fun is you can take things like the wave shape, um, where I'm, you can see, uh, this, is, this is the output of the LFO. We're making this kind of wave folded shape. And let's remove the X, you can see a little bit. It's bouncing. And now this is something that, that if you were doing this with, with a regular sequencer, this would be pretty hard to um, create a clock and a counter that does all of this. Uh, not to mention, I mean, pretty close to impossible when you have you have this direct timing that's coming in and you want it to, it, it, it's stepping forward on every clock pulse. But this is really, it's, it's, it's totally divorced from that really on timing. Um, you can actually get real pendulum where it's speeding up and slowing down as it's, uh, you know, going from edge to edge. So uh, we have some, uh, a lot of the controls are the same, a lot of the outputs are the same, of course the knobs are the same, they work the same way. Uh, the outputs are the same, these outputs are the same, they all, they all work the same way. But then if you notice that all of these controls actually changed when we're in this mode. And that is because, the, again, I was telling you how these, these inputs and outputs uh, change depending on what mode you're in, uh, and these knobs as well. Uh, we'll, we'll go over uh, one by one what each of these what each of these does. So, uh, what I found, you know, that you needed, if you're doing this kind of sequencing, is you want a gate output every time this um, every time this changes, every time this x y changes. You want an output so that you can uh, send that off to an envelope or something and, and open an envelope. And uh, I'm gonna go here and here. And so this is, if you zoom in real close, you can see X and Y here. So I can change the length. And now every time the X is changing, uh, you are getting a output gate pulse. And every time the Y is changing, you're getting an output gate pulse. So as long as it's staying on the same sequence field there, you're not getting, uh, the, as long as it's staying in the same lane uh, for the Y or the X, you don't get a, a gate output pulse. But here, in this control, you can change which output pulse you're getting by um, just changing that knob. So you have, you have X and Y, you have X or XY, and Y and XY. Got all the combinations you can make there. So that's what that knob does to these two uh, outputs. You have the length, so you can, you can control how long the gate stays high. The longer it is, the more it'll just blend into one note. Like that. And the height controls the dynamics, so how how hard the note is being played, basically. And then you have this skip function, which will, uh, right now, all of the gates that are created as it's moving from step to step are let through. But you can also skip them, so like say 50% of them now will just be randomly dropped. You just won't get them. And this adds, again, a little randomness, a little texture to uh, the, the sequence, so it's not always the exact same every time. Okay, now uh, another cool thing we have here is where we have a modulation mixer. 
and it'll be a little easier to understand if I take this off for a second. So we have the X sequencer over here. This is on you know this side. Still, you have this control that's pointing to X, and what it's doing is it's. Um, let me go. I'm gonna make this modulation go really fast, and this one kind of go slow. And one second. Let me do that. Okay. Let me think about this. Okay, so you don't have a direction like you do in the this other gate mode where every clock pulse it's going from one to the next or you can't decide okay was it going forwards or backwards the the modulation itself does that it either pushes it forwards or it pulls it backwards so what this control does instead is it will mix in between the x input or the y input so nothing is at the y input right now so it is um, it's it's stopped but if i put the y input in there now it's going to go it's also doing the y sequence but it's going in a straight line uh, because that, that's what happens if you put uh, something at both inputs it's going to just go in a um, not a straight line a diagonal line across the across the inputs like that across the knobs um, so in this way you can kind of get some other random shapes where this is halfway between x and y there's a little indicator there that kind of shows you there. So halfway between X and Y, and you're getting a different sort of uh, feeling to the X sequence. And then you can also go all the way and in invert the input. So you have you know your, your input here, and then the inverse of it uh, that's moving the X sequence. Same thing with the Y. It's just, you know, it starts on Y and then goes to X and then inverting to Y there. Now, the other really exciting thing in this, it's, you know, free, free mode, the free uh, running mode, is take these triggers over here and I'll hook these up and you, you can either you know do this directly or you can um, you can you know it's intended to be gated uh, remotely so uh, you can turn this randomized knobs uh, uh, mode on by doing this and now all of the knobs have turned red which means you can't you can't uh, edit them directly, but every trigger impulse at this input, you are able to randomize all of the knobs at once. So you don't have to go through and just go one, two, three, four, you know, like, and you just want to get some new random um, uh, values to all these knobs to make your sequence change. You can simply just press that button. Right? Okay, and then same thing to turn this off. It's it's a toggle, so it's toggled on and off. So every gate impulse that comes in switches the mode that it's in. And then in this on this side, every gate that comes in, it randomizes it, right? And if for some reason you, you um, to disconnect this and it's excuse me, sort of stuck in this mode, all you have to do is just switch back and forth between gate and mod mode and it will clear that out like this. So again, so it's, you know, there's nothing here on the panel that you could press to get it out of the the random mode except by switching back and forth between gate and mod mode it clears that out for you okay is that everything here? uh and i forgot to mention also you can add the, this this uh sync input that it was a sync input in this gate mode this becomes a second modulation input for that lane so here i can add just a little bit here and i'll back this off a little bit make this go really fast and now you can see the two sequences are added together where it's kind of trilling between the the notes uh, tr trilling between the two steps but then ultimately moving backwards and forwards from from this uh, sequencer or from this LFO okay and that's just it's it's clamped in between the zero and one so if you exceed the output it's not going to wrap around it's just going to kind of push into the wall there okay um, and I, I forgot, I have, I have several demos to show you, and there's one I realized that is still in gate mode that we still have to see, so we'll, we'll pop back to that one uh, for now. I'm gonna pause this, go here to the Hall of Mirrors, and here, and we'll go down to this sequencer demo two. Okay. So this again, this one is in gate mode as well. And what this one is showing off is a little bit more, the, the, the previous demo was showing you how the XY sequence output works. This is now an XY plus it has this, this um, four poly chord that's coming out of here as well too. So I'll listen to this. 
kind of a trance. sequencer so again it's going down so you can think about this as like this is the first chord that's being played the second chord the third fourth and fifth and these are coming out of this output here into this mod to oct which is translating it's, it's giving more space for the chord to spread out uh, through this part here and then it's shifted down to octaves gone, gone through a quantizer into the vco to create the sound uh, the poly from the VCO is collapsed using a poly mix because we don't need it to be poly um, further on uh, and we'll save a little CPU that way. So it's mixed, uh, then sent to the VCF. You have a, um, an ADSR that's being clocked by this one every 16th note. So that's a whole note if you 16 divided by 16 is one. And that is uh, driving both the uh, VCF through an attenuator to the cutoff and the VCA going to the mixer. And that, so that's this chord right here. sometimes hit that may or may not be in the, the chord itself because the chord is only being played off of these first four notes that are coming down here. And this extra note that it's sometimes coming to um, is like a little accent note that's outside of that chord. So uh, you have that same thing kind of going. You have Bernoulli gate and what that's doing is it's, it's every 16th note impulse it's choosing between uh, the, the si three sixteenths note or the sixteenth note. And that is, it's a little bit more biased towards uh, the three sixteenth note there, but then sometimes it'll change the sixteenth. You get that little kind of trill to it. Um, then the uh, XY sequence is going through the mod to aunt to the quantizer, same kind of signal flow as the other one. They're, they're really just they're copies of each other, except this one has uh, after the quantizer, a slew limiter, which makes it glide from note to note, and then a unison, which uh, takes that monophonic signal, turns it into a poly signal, and it, see it's a four poly signal, and detunes the note so you can hear the kind of spread chorusing effect. classic trance sound that the D2 and Saw waves. And you know, a little LFO modulating uh, the, again, the 
offset of the the, fil the, the filters uh, envelope as it's going to the cutoff. So it, it's kind of you have the filter envelope going, and then this is kind of mimicking the knob, turning up the knob, uh, giving a little motion over the course of the patch. Same thing as the last patch where it has you know a stereo delay here going into a reverb, uh, and then this is just mixing the kicks after the reverb, so you don't hear a uh, kick with a bunch of reverb and delay. Okay, so that's that patch, and now we'll jump back. We were talking about the modulation, um, the modulation mode in demo three, and so this is in free mode. This one's definitely going to be very different. So. sequencers that are, or sorry, these two LFOs that you can see down here, the X and the Y, uh, that are controlling the where the sequencer is stepping through the sequence field. And you have two different voices, an X and a Y, and you can see these X and Y here. One is the chord that's being played with these five notes, so it's all five of these notes added together. Uh, and sent through, again, another mod to oct, uh, translation, octave shifted down, put through a quantizer, into a VCO, collapse the um, poly with a polymix, and go into a VCA. Uh, and this one actually doesn't have any filter because what it's doing is uh, the envelope is modulating the fold of the sine wave, and so it's uh, through kind of a West Coast thing. Uh, then going through a delay into the mixer and out to the reverb. That's the chord. Through here. That's, the, that's the Y sequence. You can see it's changing every time uh, the LFO is shifting from one to the other. You can, you can hear it. And yeah, it's not it's not re-triggering this um, envelope because the length is set to too high for it to re-trigger every step. But I can. sequence. So this is every time, it's only, and only every time this sequence is changing from uh, one X value to another do you hear the note. That's why it's, it kind of happens so rarely. And that's this uh, X sequence, it's actually, it's using this XY uh, output, but the gate uh, coming from here is just coming from the X uh, output wherever it's changing. And that is coming uh, down here. And going through mod to oct, a uh, similar thing as, uh, as the above, where it's going through a quantizer and using a envelope to uh, to modify the fold amount, which imparts harmonics and lets lets go of them as the envelope goes down. Okay, and again, we can if we you know, increase the speed there. See, so there's a little there's a little wave shape going on here where it's folding the sine wave, so that's giving it a kind of thing. And you see how you can immediately change the rhythm of a sequence just by changing the shape of the modulation you have going in. And there's a, there's a lot of potential uh, for this, especially if you I, I haven't even set it up, but you could you could frequency modulate. Uh, one of these LFOs by doing something like this. We have it like going up and down. Right. right. I just combined those two LFOs and greatly expanded the rhythm. This is almost kind of like an Indian uh, like trill uh, kind of sound. Um, and this isn't something you could possibly do with, with clocks and like a normal sequencer just keeping time like this. It's very free and, and kind of fun to uh, explore and, and find new rhythms this way. Um, okay. 
And then we can, of course, see the this random mode that I'm talking about. So you could have a clock here doing this. But now it's changing all of the notes at once. So compare the chord there. So it, it, it has a bass that it always can come back to. So that's those chords that are being played. But we can randomize it too. So uh, I believe with this one, um, we'll have. Uh, okay, this is sample and hold mode. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over again to this one and explain in sample and hold uh, mode. Whoops, oh, I play this one. Let me pause this. I'm pressing spacebar to pause the um, processing, so it will stop that. <clears throat> So we go into sample and hold mode, and this is again, it's in mod mode, but this is like a sub mode of that mode. So we have the sample and hold, hold mode. You can notice now that I plug these modulation inputs in here, they're not doing anything to the sequencer, and that's because now we are actually using a combination of uh, the, whoops, the clock and the, uh, the, the LFOs here. So what I'm gonna do is, this is like now the gate input for sampling whatever modulation happens here at the X input. So I go here, the gate input. And that's sampling every time it has an input, input pulse that comes there, wherever the modulation is. So you can see it roughly going back and forth, but now it's not as, it's not as smooth as it is in uh, the modulation mode, but in this way you can actually make it keep more uh, strict time if that's a thing that you, you wanted to do. Uh, while at the same time you can still get these kind of fun repeating um, different uh, sequences over your sequence field, but locked into a kind of, in a, into a groove. Uh, same thing with here, I can go, you know, every four steps I am, uh, every, four, every four clock input pulses I'm clocking a new Y sequence. Uh, all of these other controls uh, remain the same uh, except for these outputs. Because you are already using these gate outputs, you don't need to create uh, gate outputs. And so these are just, um, these are creating another, uh, it's the same as it was in the gate mode where it's just picking a random sequence every input pulse from the, the field. You know, maybe I'll figure out something to do with, with these knobs because they don't really do anything in this mode uh, with the sample and hold. But uh, for now, these are just kind of, uh, they don't do anything in the sample and hold mode uh, in particular. Um, so, but the, the same thing, these, these controls still work the same where you can mix the X and Y modulation into each other uh, before it's sampled. Okay. So, uh, what's, let's move, pop over to the sample and hold mode uh, demo over here. So this voice again has, uh, th th this patch has again three voices, it's got a kick and that kick is down here, and that's just being pulsed every uh, quarter note there, and that's going to the mixer uh, there. 
then uh, you have two voices here. One is this, this is kind of, of kick down. It's a kind of sort of strummed guitar-like sound. Um, and then the second one is this bass, uh, bass sound. have going on here is these two LFOs are going in through the X and the Y and we have uh, this Bernoulli gate which is accepting impulses from either the sync which just keeps it high or uh, we have the 16th note and so every 16th note it's choosing between whether it's going to send the always on signal or the 16th note pulse and that gives it that kind of ba -ba 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 like holding and then sometimes it's it's kind of throwing away the gate to this unused output which just acts as like a, a gate skipper um, so that gives another more uh, module the variation and we're for the notes for this one we are using the XY output for the bass sequencer. Going through again the quantizer, VCO, polymix, we're familiar with this at this point, it's pretty much the same kind of setup. Uh, it's even got a unison there. Um, that's being modulated by a LFO here, just to give it a little motion. Same thing with the LFO, it's you know uh, modulating the cutoff in addition to what the, uh, the envelope is doing. And we pop up here to this other part of the patch, this, this is kind of interesting. So we have, I wanted to show how you can, you don't have just to always be playing a chord. You can use a setup like this and strum a chord or something or do a kind of arpeggio uh, with it. Um, by, we have uh, this, this one here is using, you can see, tracing the wire down this four output from the, uh, the Y sequencer. So this pop four poly output. And what we're doing here is we're, we're cycling through in this poly signal, triggering the gates one at a time, but very quickly. And I'm able to do that by, we have the Bernoulli gate that is, uh, it's being triggered every um, eighth note, and it's choosing between a 3 16th note and an eighth note. And then that output is going to this one here that's choosing between the result of this or this times six um, and or times four. Sorry, it's, it's choosing, sorry, this is choosing whether it's, it's going between times six or times two of this main clock out pulse. Um, so you have the 16th note that's either a 32nd note or like whatever, God, 16 times six is, I can't do that in my head. <clears throat> Either way, it's really fast, and the point is that it's kind of giving that like a little bit of different texture, so it's not always doing it at the same speed. Um, here it is. So sometimes it's like, da -da 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 -da. and then sometimes it's more <laughs> fast. That one is the times six, and this one where it's just going, da -da 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 -da. that's the times uh, two. here is use a shift register uh, to take this output of this module and use the result of this whether it's going times uh, two or times six and we're moving that gate output from one poly voice to the next just kind of shooting it up uh, through the poly voices uh, and because every time the, the shift register is pulsed, it's, it samples the, the input and holds it at the output. And then if it's uh, pulsed again, it samples a new sample and then moves this previous sample up one output and then grabs that new sample. And then everything's just getting shifted up every single time it gets pulsed. In. Uh, and then that is packed together into this, with this combined node that is then sent to the envelope. And that's how you're getting this, this uh, this, this strumming effect. And these are the gates you can see here. One of the cool features of the shift register module is it has a fade option. So as the um, gates are sent from one output to the next, it, it, the more the fade control is turned up, 
the more the level will be reduced for every single time it gets pushed to the next output. So then that, that can also uh, change the sort of dynamics where you're hearing mostly just the first note and then very little of the last note as the gate uh, is going down like that. You can see. And then these are the this is the output of the envelope. And again, similar situation. Uh, it's just going through normal. VCO, VCF, VCA, uh, through a delay to the mixer and we open out. So, you know, again, to go over what's going on here in the sequencer, you have the sample and hold uh, that is looking at what the LFOs are having coming in and, and grabbing that modulation to set that as the current step. Uh, so you get this cool kind of uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, of course, this one is another cool uh, trick you can do is uh, sync the LFO so that every time we have this um, uh, 16th note, or sorry, the whole note coming around, it's re-triggering the envelope so you get a very consistent sound and it's not just going to keep phasing over time and maybe be different every single measure. Every measure, it's going to have a similar uh, movement across the, the steps because it's instead of instead of it just freely moving and being out of sync with the clock it's the clock is forcing it to be in time by resetting it in the, the one note or one measure so, okay so that's for that one and we'll do five this one is in um, yeah so free and clocked mode so I'm going to pop over again to this, pause that. And in both of the sample and hold and the, um, oh, whoops, start the processing again. Both of the sample and hold and free modes have a clocked mode where it splits the other side of the sequencer into um, being able to be clocked. And it, this side still works exactly the same. Uh, except this one now is the Y sequencer is now being able to be clocked. So uh, we can go here and for example, you know, every eight pulses, we will move down from one y, y sequence to the next, while at the same time being able to move the X sequence freely over this. And just reset it there. Okay, so we have this X sequence moving freely over the, over the sequence field, but the Y sequence is bringing some regu regularity by moving from sequence to sequence with a, um, we, we could have a kick drum coming off of this clock divider, other things that are keeping everything sort of in time together, but now you have uh, the, the notes um, with the combination of this freedom of the modulation and the locked in time of the clock. And again, this is, this is the, the trick I was talking about before, so every time uh, it's moving down, it's getting pulsed every eight, um, every measure, so I can reset this LFO so that every measure, it's doing the same exact movement. Maybe you can see this now a little bit uh, better, where every, every LFO, um, every time it's moving, it's doing the same kind of rhythm from one to the next. And we can just change that rhythm just by simply uh, moving the, the sine wave, uh, doing a different kind of speed to it. And I'm using sine, I, I just, you, you can do whatever you want. You can do a triangle wave, you can do a saw wave. You, you, again, you can frequency modulate things. You can have an envelope going into there. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Any kind of modulation signal that you can create uh, will move over the sequence field. Um, and you can wave shape it. So that gives like a super saw, and so it's kind of moving forward and then kicking back and going up. All sorts of cool rhythms that you can create using this free and clocked mode, or ex you can put it in sample and hold and clock mode, either one. Uh, and in free and clocked mode, these, uh, these outputs are split. Again, so you have the X, um, the X output there, and that's fixed. In, in this mode where that's only going to output the X sequence and you have control over the length and the height uh, of where the, uh, what the gate output of the free um, moving sequence there is. 
and but then you lose the the ability to control uh, these two because you have to use these controls to the, for the beginning and end of the Y sequence. And then again, this this will also this control comes back uh, in clock mode where you can add that randomness to move back and back and forwards there. Um, but in here, you can still randomize all of the knobs uh, and you know click through, randomize them, turn that function on and off like that. And in sample and hold, these um, these will now uh, yeah. What is this? I'm actually I'm blanking. This is the first thing I'm blanking. There's so many functions that I'm blanking on what this does at the moment. Um, it's in the description of the the module, but here this is the of course it's sample and holding the input at, like it does in in the sample and hold mode. Um, and then I'll come back to this if I, if I remember I'll leave it in the comments um, what this input does so uh, we have this last little demo for you here turn this up I've gone and grabbed a custom um, uh, arrangement where I have X, uh, Y1, Y2, and then XY. And I'm combining those sequences with the combined node. And then those are moving on to the synthesizer and becoming the voice that you hear. And that's how you, you're hearing this little, 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 little kind of trill from the uh, movement of that uh, XY sequence. So of course, because we, we have this, this kind of goofy modulation that's coming from the, um, we have the, the combined action of this fast LFO here, that's going giving that little trill effect, and the slower LFO here, right? if we add these two together, that's also, you can see, getting synced and reset them together and you'll see that this, this is what's happening inside of the module. And that's how it's moving back and forth between the steps like that. You aren't hearing uh, the Y do any kind of crazy trilling because it's, it's the Y is being clocked so it's just seeing these two notes right here as it's going down like this and creating kind of a dyad, I think they're called, so when it's just two notes, not like a chord. So this little, little, little one is becoming sort of a lead, sort of a trill, grace note kind of thing. Um, but that's, that's just another example of how you can use this, this mode to create something really kind of organic um, out of using this sequence uh, in a different way. Uh, again, with you going through the combined node into Quantizer, voice, uh, modulation, same setup as always. Uh, what's unique about this is that it's then, uh, af it's actually kept uh, polyphonic all the way through here and then split apart and sent to the mixers independently. Uh, and that is so that we can get this pan effect uh, where some you know, are, are in different uh, ears there. And we've got this stereo width the stereo with or increase it. Again, of course, the kick. Um, yeah, and you can hear a second. Increase the speed of that.
let's get to the kind of a shuffle sound. Anyway, so this, I, I could be talking about this sequence for hours and hours. You can see the potential here. There's so much more that you can do it. I hope at least you understand now the basic functions of the sequencer and how it works. Everything is described um, in the panel here, and it's a lot to read, but, you know, I mean, it's a lot to read, but you can also, you don't have to read everything if you're just interested in a particular mode. Uh, you can just look for what you need to know about that one mode. Um, again, a lot of the outputs and things are, are shared in between modes, so you don't have to necessarily relearn things for a, for a different mode every time. Um, once, once you, and then I guess once, once you've kind of mastered what this module does, it, it, the workflow I think is really uh, good, good to work with, and it's really fast, and you can get something going really quickly that's way more complicated and way more um, kind of nuanced and involved than you can with just like the normal eight-step sequencer or whatever you would do uh, with that. And of course, in the future, you, know, you, can, you can send, you can send this. You can use just the sequencer and send the MIDI out to like another uh, synth that you have. You, you can send it out. Uh, you know, I've got in front of me right now, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got this new, you know, Eurorack modular that I'll be doing some demo videos with. And I can s take this ma matrix sequencer, send the CV out to my modular synth, and use this sequencer with an analog uh, synth. So, for the sake of brevity, I'll keep it short there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have another video where I'm going to actually go through and talk about how the sequencer is made, and I keep that for another video. Uh, I, I still need to work on the innards a little bit, get it a little bit more efficient uh, working in the inside, but at least now it works. Um, but there, I'm going to do a tutorial that will show you uh, not only how it works on the inside, um, I just popped into the sequencer there. Not only how it works on the inside, the kind of idea behind all of this, all of this crazy stuff I had to do to keep it um, uh, organized in the inside, how, how matrix sequencers work, how this mode switching works from each mode uh, one to the other, but also I'm gonna give a breakdown of all of this code that I wrote for the, uh, you can see all of the lights and everything is, even the text, everything is drawn in Lua on the canvas, in the canvas node. And all of this stuff is, it looks complicated, uh, and it can be for um, a complete beginner, but I'm going to try to explain this all in a way that will be really easy for everyone to understand, even if you have no uh, conception of what coding is at all. Um, my goal is that you'll be able to at least understand what's going on here, if not do something like this yourself. Um, but what the advantage is of drawing uh, everything on one canvas node is that it uses very, very little CPU. You can see this is using the 0.1% you know, of everything that this, uh, this module is using, the, the CPU that the computer is, is taking up. And in, I'm going through now and going through the modules and going to eventually replace all of these light nodes so that you can see individual lights like this. I'm gonna replace them with a canvas node like this one. And that's, that's why I wanna show you guys how to do this too because it's a really CPU efficient way to get graphics onto your modules and you, you can do these kind of cool things where like I'm switching in between mod and gate mode and it's it's showing you okay this is x and s now like uh, x and m you can't do that stuff with just a text node you have to have this kind of programmatic change uh, somehow within the lua node that will allow you to do like animations like this where, where you go backwards and forwards um, it's all stuff that's it's in whole you have to learn a lot but this individual thing of how how this works it's really easy to understand um, so Hopefully, this, this sequencer can be kind of a uh, jumping in point for the next level of Modulus, where you're really kind of upping your game. If you're a builder, you can, you can learn a lot from the way this is built and then go on and build other things uh, for yourself that'll be uh, leagues beyond what you're, you're building right now. So thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you.